What's up guys? Scott here, Alpenard Tech, back from vacation and time to get back into another video. So I don't know how you guys are, but I hate it when my ISP drops out. I'm in a brand new location, brand new neighborhood, and the ISP is good when it works, but it doesn't always work and it drops out a lot. So I reached out to the guys over at Wavelink. Um, we've done some collaborations before on some other products and they answered the call for me and they sent over this guy. This is a router with 5G fallback, dual mode, and it works amazing. So you can use it in dual or fallback. It is the WLNF100X3NR-B and it's been doing great for me so far. I run this with my T-Mobile tablet plan and it works no problem. And anyway, I just wanna show this off to you guys, let you guys check it out for yourselves and let's get in the video. All right, guys, so here's a quick rundown of the Wavelink WL-WNF100X3NR-B. And I got to say, this thing is a little beast. Speed first, because why not? You're getting up to 3.4 gigabits on 5G, plus almost 3 gigabits of Wi-Fi 6. Translation, 4K streaming, giant downloads, zero waiting around. This thing's totally flexible. You can run it as a normal router. You can run it as a 5G, 4G router, or both at the same time. Um, the fallback on it is great. <clears throat> I use it so when my ISP drops out, it switches over to 5G with no issues. You've got a gigabit WAN LAN port, another gigabit LAN. So this is only gigabit. If you have multi-gigabit internet, this is not for you. But for a gigabit LAN, and, uh, WAN, it's perfect. Um, and again, you got that extra LAN for anything that likes to be wired. Coverage that actually reaches. This thing's got nine internal antennas and beamforming technology. It pushes solid. Stable Wi-Fi across up to 2,000 square feet, they say. Um, I, it does push my entire house. It's a little bigger than that. So yeah, dead zones deleted. Security lockdown, it does have all the standard encryption with the WPA3, WPA2. It supports up to a 128 devices, and it's got VPN, like OpenVPN, um, L2TP, PPTP, and WireGuard. Keeps everything safe and clean, and it's stupid easy to set up. I mean, you just plug the thing in, plugged in my WAN, logged into the... IP address it gives you, and I was off. That was it, super easy. So let's open it up and check it out. All right, so you get your ethernet cord, you get a power supply, and you get the router. Here you got your 4G, 5G connection. Here you got your ISP input. Then you've got your ethernet, so going out to your devices. And then you've got a power light, and then you got a pairing button here to pair it with a mesh system. On the back side here, we've got two spots for external antennas, and it doesn't come with the antenna. And then you have your WAN and LAN port. So it can be hooked up to your ISP the way I hook it up, or you can use it dual LAN if you want. And your second LAN, either way, you got your WAN here input and your LAN output here if you're just doing it the way I do it. So anyway... This is your power supply, and then on the bottom is where they hide the SIM card. So let's see if I can pop this thing open. Ugh. All right, here we go. And this is the SIM card. And me, I have T-Mobile. Um, T-Mobile works really well where I'm at, so it's just a standard micro SIM card. And again, T-Mobile, really strong here. Um, so yeah, that's the way I use it. I use it as a fallback and it lets me connect my ISP most of the time. And then when the ISP drops out, which it does a lot here for some reason, 
um, probably mainly because the construction and everything. So that's the device in a nutshell. Let's get it plugged in and I'll take you through the dashboard and a little bit of the app. All right guys, so here we are on the computer and we are gonna jump right into some speed tests on this bad boy. So let's open up speedtest.net and I do use the Mac app instead of all the added ones. So anyway, right now we are on, I do not have the LAN plugged into it and we are connected to it wireless through ethernet. So we're gonna do a quick T-Mobile test here and see how it does with the 5G. And this is pretty typical for my 5G. My phone gets about the same. So I just ran the same thing on my phone and I'm getting 225 upload. Oh, it just dropped down to 180, 190 upload. And I'm getting an 18, I mean, sorry. I'm getting a 209 and an 18 on T-Mobile. So. Yeah, this has a little better uh, antenna built in it than my iPhone or just where it's sitting is in a better location. Um, so yeah, there's the T-Mobile speeds. We'll do that one more time. But again, this is, I, doesn't even, I don't even know it drops out when I'm streaming, you know, videos on YouTube or watching some, something on the Fire Stick or something. I don't even know that it dropped out. I don't even know. The, the only way I know that it dropped out is my other devices um, will send me an alert on the phone, like my ring doorbell will tell me it lost connection. And that's about it. So yeah, um, there's the T-Mobile download. So give me just a second. I will plug in the ISP and we'll do this again. So let me go ahead and close this out and see how it switches over. All right, so we are on the wireless and still, but now I have the ISP plugged in. So let's open up the speed test app here. And now you can see we're on fiber first. We are wireless and let's see what we get. Yeah, and that is not typical speeds. But I gotta admit that the router is sitting like three and a half, four feet away from the Mac Studio. So usually I'm down in the 550s to 600s. So that's very impressive for a wireless connection. I've seen usually around 480 to 550. I've never seen anything in the 7, 800. So yeah, this is a uh, pretty impressive, but again, it usually does not sit three feet away from my Mac studio. And I rarely use the Mac Studio in wireless anyway. It's usually plugged in wired. So anyway, let me go ahead, after this one's done, I will go ahead and plug it in to the LAN and see what we get. All right, so I went ahead and plugged it into the WAN, or LAN, I mean. And let's just see, we got 806 and 746. Let's see what we get wired. There we go. So this is a gigabit router with a uh, gigabit port. So, whoa, we're getting above a gigabit there. So that's very impressive. I have never plugged this thing in wired. So this is the first time we're seeing this together. So um, yeah, for a gigabit port, that's not bad. If you drop that 73 over here on the 27 we got a perfect gigabit but anyway um yeah so wired it does a little better <clears throat> and again those those wireless speeds were not typical i do not usually see that because this usually sits down at the server closet at the end of the hall and but yeah so this is my isp plugged in to the wan port and then land directly into the mac studio and there you have it, there's the speeds. So um, speed test, very successful. I love the speed of this thing, it's fast. It's just as fast as what came with the ISP. ISP doesn't have 5G fallback though, so this does. So anyway, let me close this out. And then we'll go through uh, just real quick over the uh, wavelength here. 
So here we go, here's the dashboard, and I just have it as Alphanerd YouTube because this is a YouTube test, but I'm gonna be keeping this thing because this thing's amazing. Quick little overview of everything. You got your 5G, you can set up here all the settings for 5G. Everything's ready out of the box, pretty much. I didn't have to change anything here. I plugged in my SIM card from T-Mobile, and I don't have the home Ethernet, home internet um, SIM card. I just have the unlimited tablet SIM card plugged in here that adds on to my phone for $10 a month, and it works fine. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing that, but I don't care. It works, so I don't. It's just fallback. Um, I've used maybe 40, 50 gig in three weeks, so it's not like I'm I'm abusing it or anything and you got all your wireless settings here so this is where you'd set up your SSID your passwords and everything you got some advanced stuff here where you can change your channels I pretty much leave everything in automatic and I put it on the 80 probably a little faster if I would have went here but anyway I don't want it to interfere with my other routers so everything just works pretty much right out of the box the only thing I did have to change is on the dashboard if we go to multi-wan i did have to change this because this was opposite and i think that's maybe because when i booted it up i only booted it up with the sim card in and the mobile network so it didn't know it had an ethernet so it just popped up here at first but once i changed it no matter what now it stays the same i hit the save button and everything's good I do have it on failure recovery, not load balancing. You can do it either way. If you have like an unlimited, really, really high speed 5G plan, mobile plan, the, and you want to, and your ethernet, a lot of ethernet ISPs are limited or not, you know, they give you so many at priority speeds and then it slows you down. You can put it over here in load balancing and it'll switch back and forth as it needs to, to make sure everything's good. Again, I use it as failure recovery, so kind of tells you everything here anyway. I don't need to really explain this, but yeah, so I use it just so when my ISP drops out, which it does, again, lots of construction going on here, new housing. I don't know, they had some issues when they first put my internet in. So far, this thing's been amazing. I'm keeping it, I'm gonna use it. Here are all of the 5G technologies Wavelink sent over to me. Uh, take a look at it. You can see it works with everything. And again, I'm on T-Mobile, it works perfect. I first tested it out with a Verizon SIM through Total Wireless, worked perfect. So again, thanks for watching guys. I'm not gonna go over the app. The app, pretty much the same as the website, except you can't change this priority in the app. Um, I actually had to log in to do it here on the web. So everything else is pretty much the same. You get the same menus. You get your net tools, you get your security, you get your net guardian where you can block your kids out of certain sites or like I like to turn off YouTube so the kid's not watching YouTube all night long. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. There is a link down below for this thing. Um, it is available both on the Wavelink website and on Amazon. I have got links down there for it. Those links do help me out, and they don't cost you anything. If there's any coupons or anything that pops up, I will throw them down there too because sometimes Wavelink will throw me a nice little coupon that goes on top of whatever sales they're having. So... Yeah, if you guys uh, want to check it out, click the link down below. It helps me out, helps out the channel. doesn't cost you guys a penny. It's just a click away. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.